we're so grateful that we have the ears to hear and the eyes to see that your Ruach is leading and teaching us. So in these difficult times that we find ourselves in, Father, help us to do not fear. For you say, fear not. See, people have many fears of all sorts of things. What do you fear? What are your deepest, most horrifying fears? Fear of loss? Fear of losing something or someone? Fear of the future? Fear of humiliation or failure? Fear of Yahuwah's judgment? Fear of death? Fear of eternal judgment? What do you fear? We look at this word fear in the pictograph. The word yara appears, spelt with a, a yod, a resh, a lef. These, these letters, and they produce these, these meanings that give us a deeper revelation. A yod, is, it means worship, or to work, or a deed. The resh means first, the beginning. Aleph is a strength or a strong leader. So the word picture of the Hebrew letters tell us that in our worship, our work and deed, do it unto the first, the beginning, our strong leader. Hallelujah. Fear in Hebrew is the word yara, the H 3372. It's a primitive root, means to fear or more to revere, to honor, to cause to frighten, to stand in awe of, or to be afraid of. Yara, the H 3373, means to fear, to revere, reverence, or dreadful. So the meaning of fear is to be afraid of, to have a strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger, the flowing or quivering of the gut from fear or awe, to dread what is terrible or revere what is respected. See, Genesis 15 verse 1 says, After this, the word of Yahuwah came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. And that night, Yahuwah appeared to him and said, I am the Alhim of your father, Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will barak you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant, Abraham. I am Yahuwah, the Alhim of your father, he said. Do not be afraid to go down to Misraim, for I will make you into a great nation there. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Masha answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance Yahuwah will bring you today. See, Masha said to the people, do not be afraid, for Yahuwah has come to test you, so that the fear of Yahuwah will be with you to keep you from sinning. I will grant shalom in the land, and you will lie down, and no one will make you afraid. Only do not rebel against Yahuwah, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Their protection is gone. But Yahuwah is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Do not show partiality in judging. Hear both small and great alike. Do not be afraid of anyone, for judgment belongs to Yahuwah. See, Yahuwah, your Alhim, has given you the land. Go up and take possession of it as Yahuwah, the Alhim of your ancestors, told you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Do not be afraid of them. Yahuwah, your Alhim, himself will fight for you. But do not be afraid of them. Remember well that Yahuwah, your Alhim, did to Pharaoh and to all Mitzrayim. Be strong and courageous. 
Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for Yahuwah your Ohim goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Yahuwah himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for Yahuwah your Alhim will be with you wherever you go. For Yahuwah said to Yahusha, Do not be afraid of them. I have given them into your hand. Not one of them will be able to withstand you. Yahusha said to them, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Be strong and courageous. This is what Yahuwah will do to all the enemies you are going to fight. But Yahuwah said to him, Shalom, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. Do not be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then you will have success if you are careful to obey the decrees and the Torah, the instructions that Yahuwah gave to Masha. For Asherah, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. David also said to Solomon, his son, be strong and courageous and do it. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For Yahuwah Elohim, my Alua, is with you. He will neither fail you nor forsake you before all the works of the service of the house of Yahuwah is finished. This is what Yahuwah says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but Yahuwah's. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance Yahuwah will give you, Yahuda and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for you will be protected from the lash of the tongue and need not fear when destruction comes. Then, free of fault, you will lift up your face, and you will stand firm without fear. Their homes are safe and free from fear. The rod of Yahuwah is not on them. I will not fear. Though ten thousands shall assail me on every side, in Shalom, I will lay down and sleep. For you alone, Yahuwah, make me dwell in safety. I will halu, Yahuwah, who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I keep my eyes always on Yahuwah. With him at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. Even though... I walk through the darkest valley. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yahuwah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? For Yahuwah is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Whom shall I be afraid? Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war break out against me. Even then, I will be confident. So Yahuwah gives strength to his people. Yahuwah Baruch, his people with shalom. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in Yahuwah, whose word I halu. In Yahuwah, I trust and am not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? In Yahuwah I trust and shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? He guided them safely so they were unafraid, but the sea engulfed their enemies. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day. When anxiety was great within me, your consultation brought me joy. Yahuwah is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? 
Great shalom have those who love your Torah, your instructions, and nothing can make them stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Have no fear of sudden disaster or of the ruin that overtakes the wicked. So then banish anxiety from your heart and cast off the troubles of your body, for youth and vigor are meaningless. Do not call conspiracy everything this people calls a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear and do not dread it. Do you hear what he said? Do not call conspiracy everything this people calls a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear. Do not dread it. Surely Yahuwah is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Yahuwah, Yahuwah himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong. Do not fear. Your Alhim will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. You who bring good news to Zion. Go up on the high mountains, you who bring good news to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid, says Sir, say to the towns of Yehuda, here is your Alhim. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your Alhim. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I am Yahuwah, your Alhim, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. Do not be afraid. You worm, Jacob, little Yasserel, do not fear, for I myself will help you, declares Yahuwah, your Redeemer, the Kadosh one of Yasserel. But now, this is what Yahuwah says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Yasserel, do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather them from the west. This is what Yahuwah says. He who made you, who formed you in the womb, and who will help you, do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant. Yasserel, whom I have chosen. Did you hear what he just said? We are called Yasserel. We are the grafted in ones into him as his people whom he has chosen. Hallelujah. Give him praise for that. If you really recognize who you are, then you should be praising him for that one scripture. Do not tremble and do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any Allah besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. Do not be afraid. You will not be put to shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. In righteousness, you will be established. Tyranny will be far from you. You will have nothing to fear. Terror will be far removed. It will not come near you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, and I rescue you, declares Yahuwah. Like a scarecrow in a cucumber field, their idols cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them. They cannot do you no harm, nor can they do any good. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Do not be afraid of the king of Babylon, who you now fear. Do not be afraid of him, declares Yahuwah, for I am with you and will save you and deliver you from his hand. Do not be afraid, Jacob, my servant, for I am with you, declares Yahuwah.
though I completely destroy all the nations among which I will scatter you, I will complete, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. But do not lose heart or be afraid when rumors are heard in the land. One rumor comes this year and, an, and another the next. Rumors of violence in the land and of rulers against rulers. I will make your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than flint. Do not be afraid of them or terrified by them, though they are a rebellious people. Then he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel. Since the first day that you set your hand to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your Elohim, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. Do not be afraid, you who are highly esteemed, he said, Shalom, be strong now, be strong. When he spoke to me, I was strengthened and said, speak my Adon since you have given me strength. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Mitzrayim and my Ruach remains among you. Do not fear. Just as you, Yehuda and Yisrael, have been a curse among the nations, so I will save you, and you will be a baraka. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Let your hands be strong, so I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, perjurers, against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless, and deprive the foreigners among you of justice. But do not fear me, says Yahuwah Almighty. So do not be afraid of them, for there's nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. But Yahusha immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Overhearing what they said, Yahusha told him, don't be afraid, just believe, because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. But the mullock said to her, do not be afraid, Miriam, you have found favor with Yahuwah. Hearing this, Yahusha said, Jarius, don't be afraid, just believe and she will be healed. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You're worth more than many sparrows. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. Shalom, I leave with you. My shalom, I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I have told you these things so that in me you may have shalom. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. One night Yahushua spoke to Shaul in a vision. Do not be afraid, keep on speaking, do not be silent. Therefore, since we have been justified through Amuna, we have shalom with Yahuwah through our Adon, Yahusha HaMashiach. So we say with confidence, Yahuwah is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Adon, you are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are Baruch. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. 
I am the first and the last. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, Hasatan will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. So Yahuwah reassures his people, for a time they will suffer his judgment, his punishment. They will face many horrific, horrific situations, but Yahuwah will not abandon them. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, I will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. To redeem something means to pay a price to get it back. Yahuwah's people are called and chosen. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you or called you by name. See, Yahuwah's passion for his people is breathtaking. In his sight, they are precious and honored, and he simply loves them. He loves us. So let's take a look at the fear of Yahuwah. He says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna, the everlasting fire, which is the second death. For I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear the one who, after you have been killed, has the power to throw you into Gehenna, the everlasting fire, which is that second death. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Do you not know what it truly means to fear Yahuwah? See, many do not realize that we are actually commanded to fear him. This fear keeps us in submission to his Torah, and it also helps keep his favor upon our lives. The fear of Yahuwah means to have a reverential awe of or fear of Yahuwah. Fear is an abstract concept, but the Abri, or the Hebrew, if you will, word translated as fear, have a more concrete definition behind them. The first root we will examine is the Kad, the H6342. It means fear. It comes from the H. Um, I'm sorry, it's the H6342 as a noun, and it came upon me, and the trembling and caused all my bones to shake. There's that same pakad again, that same trembling, that same fear. You feel it within your body. It's something that's more than just a feeling even. See, in this verse, the word fear is the noun, pasah, and it means a shaking while the word shake is the verb, also pasag, meaning to shake. So the second Avery root is the H3372, yare. It's a primitive root. It means to fear or more to revere, to honor, to cause, to frighten, to stand in awe of, to be afraid of. Fear it comes from the yare, the H3373, which means to fear, to revere, reverence. And dreadful. So in the following verses, we will see that this verb means fear in the sense of what we would consider fear. And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I feared because I was naked and I hid myself. So in the next verse, we see the same every word in a more positive context. He says, You will revere Yahuwah your Alua, and you will serve him and his name you will swear. See, many would conclude from these two passages, this Hebrew word has two different meanings, fear and reverence. This assumption is made with many every words. But this is caused by an understanding of the every vocabulary from a non-Hebraic perspective. So each every word has only one meaning but can have many different applications. See, the literal concrete meaning of yare is a flowing of the gut, 
which can be applied to fear or reverence. So essentially this flowing of the gut feeling is to be in the presence of something so amazing that you could feel it in your body. False fear can be found in your body too, but Yara feels different. You have, you gotta, have you ever uh, been so scared or been in the presence of something so amazing that you could feel it in your gut? See, this feeling is the meaning of this word. See, the Abri were emotional people, and in many cases, their words are describing a feeling rather than an action. The next we see here is Yara, spelled with a, a Yod, a Resh, a Laugh, and a Hey. A work, a deed, a worship. The first, the top, the beginning. The strength or the strong leader. Look. Reveal a breath. So the fear or the yare of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the kadosh is understanding according to Proverbs 9.10. So the word fear in this verse is the noun yare, the H3374, meaning dreadful, exceedingly, fearfulness. And it is derived from the verb yara, the H3372 more to revere, to honor, to cause the frightened, or to stand in awe of, to be afraid of. The common understanding of this verse is if one is afraid of or in great awe of Yahuwah, he will have wisdom. See, a primary and a basic element of the fear of Yahuwah is revelation. Deuteronomy 4 verses 1 through 15 opens with a call to Yasserel to hold tight to the words of Yahuwah, verse 1 through 3, which is equivalent to clinging to Yahuwah himself, verses 4 and 5. See, then Masha stresses that it is the possession of this verbal revelation, which is both their national wisdom and their point of distinction, according to verse 6 through 8. Six to eight. So they must hold fast the words and the memory of their encounter with Yahuwah, according to verse 9 and 10. Deuteronomy 4.10 reads, The day that you stood before Yahuwah your Elohim at Oreb, Yahuwah said to me, Gather the people to me, that I may let them hear my words, so that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. So from this verse and the larger context, I isolate two observations. Fear here clearly is not merely an emotion, or else I think that the fire in all in verse 11 would have done the trick. But tear, the, the fear here is something that must be learned and that requires revelation from Yahuwah. Yahuwah commanded that the people hear his words so that they may learn to fear him. They, they learn to know who he is, his greatness, his great power and authority, the things that he created and the things that he can do with his creation. He's greater than all. That requires reverence and fear. And that they might teach the fear of Yahuwah to their children. So you, you can't teach something that you don't know. And once you understand, as we understand, as we continue to study and break down this word, we gain a deeper respect, a deeper reverence, a deeper fear of him, of losing him, or what could be done if we walk away from him. He is in control of our eternal destiny. That's reverential fear. That is fearing Yahuwah, the fear of Yahuwah. And then we see in verse 12 through 14 where Yahuwah himself directs the spotlight in that entire encounter. Darkness, clouds, fire, the very voice of Yahuwah. Is that where Yahuwah fixes their attention? No. In fact, Yahuwah expressly says, you heard the sounds of words, but you saw no form. There was only a voice in verse 12b. He goes on to relate at length the fact that 
he revealed and inscribed the Ten Commandments in verse 13 and commanded Masha to teach them statutes and rules that they might do them, according to verse 14. See, there was no form or there was only the word of Yahuwah, according to verse 15. So Yahuwah emphasizes his word and specifically stresses that he spoke to them and that he rendered himself quotable. Therefore, if anyone wishes to learn to fear Yahuwah today, he will not chase after reports of supernatural outbreaks here and there. Instead, he will open his scriptures and he will pray that Yahuwah opens his heart to hear his voice speaking through it and will teach him to fear Yahuwah thereby, which we find in Psalms 119.18 and Hebrews 3, verse 7. See, the point comes up again in Deuteronomy 31, verses 9 through 13, where Masha commanded the Levites to read the word of Yahuwah to the people at their national assemblies in order that they may hear and learn and fear Yahuwah your Elohim, and be careful to observe all the words of this Torah, of this instruction. Verse 12 emphasizes, it added that their children may also hear and learn to fear Yahuwah. Verse 13. So what Yahuwah stresses is the reading of his word as essential to Yashraelites coming to fear him. Deuteronomy 31, verse 13, is worth further emphasis in that Yahuwah expressly declares that this is how the children who have not known would learn to fear him. Have not known what? In context, they have not known his miraculous deeds, 11, verse 2. By saying this, Yahuwah is indicating that the truth and the power of his word are sufficient, not only sufficient, but superior. Leviticus 19, verse 32, 25, verse 17, 35 and 36, as well as 43. Fear of Yahuwah is a commandment. Fear, the H, 3372, more to revere, to honor, the cause to frighten or to stand in awe of, to be afraid of. Elohim, who made Solomon an extremely wise man, and part of the knowledge tells us to be in the fear all day long. Proverbs 23, 17 and Deuteronomy 5, verse 28 and 29. So Yahuwah has said that it would be well with us and our children forever, according to Proverbs 10, 29 and 19, 23, if we fear, if we fear him. Jeremiah 32, verse 36 to 40, if we fear or reverence him, if we're in awe of him, we will not turn aside, according to Deuteronomy 6, 1 and 2 and 13 and 24 and 25 and verse 8, verse 5 and 6 and 10, verse 12 and 13 and 20, verse 13 and 14, 14, verse 22 and 23 and 17, verses 14 through 19. Fearing the H3372. Fearing Yahuwah is walking in the Torah. So I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for their own good and the good of their children after them. Jeremiah 32, verse 39. I will make with them an everlasting covenant that I will not turn away from doing good to them. And I will put my fear, put the fear of me in their hearts that they may not turn from me, Jeremiah 32, 40. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Yisrael after those days, declares Yahuwah. I will put my Torah, my instructions within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their Aluah, and they will be my people, Jeremiah 31, 33, Hebrews 10, 16, and Hebrews 8, verse 10. Yahuwah commanded us to obey all of these decrees and to fear Yahuwah, our Alua, the Almighty One, so that we might always prosper and keep alive, be kept alive, according to Deuteronomy 6.24, to be ever kept alive. We're going to continue. If we stay in this fear, this reverential fear and awe of his word and who he is and what he's outlining for us, we have a promise that we will be kept alive 
for eternity with him. Deuteronomy 25, verse 17, 19. Those that do not fear, that do not revere, do not reverence, do not see Yahuwah for who he is. Those that do not fear Yahuwah are ruthless and cold. Amalek did not fear Yahuwah. His remembrance was blotted out from under the Shemayim. Teach me your ways, Yahuwah, that I may rely on your trustworthiness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Psalms 86.11. And in Proverbs 15.33, the fear of Yahuwah is described as the discipline or the instruction of wisdom. See, believers are not to be scared of Yahuwah. We have no reason to be scared of him. We have his promise that nothing can separate us from his love, according to Romans 8, verse 38, 39. We have his promise that, we will, that, that he will never leave us or forsake us, in Hebrews 13, 5. So fearing Yahuwah means having such a reverence for him that it has a great impact on the way we live our lives. The fear of Yahuwah is respecting him. Obeying his Torah, his instructions, submitting to his discipline, and worshiping him in awe. Give me your thoughts, brother, what, uh, what we've heard today, what you've been getting. You know, let us see what Yahuwah has revealed today. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom, brother. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. Shabbat shalom everyone um no nah, i think it's i think it's important that um to note that that and how we have to be in tune with what yahoo is speaking to us personally and and you know, for you as a leader of the fellowship to, to be in tune with him, to know what it is he wants you to say. And, you know, I think it's apropos that, you know, this word that you shared today, you know, it speaks to our hearts <clears throat> specifically in this epic of time, you know, what we're seeing. Um, you know, there's a lot of unknowns, you know, I think, you know, even if, as we look at this pandemic and, you know, there's so many different views and ideas and thoughts and suggestions and conspiracies and, you know, but I think in all of that, we, we also have to be truthful with ourselves and what it means to us, you know, in the realm of what scripture is telling us, right? So, so with that comes apprehension, you know, with that comes fear, it comes, you know, you know, un not knowing, unknowing provides a fearful atmosphere for most, you know. Um, and to me, it's just, you know, it blows my mind how the time that we're in the message you brought and then you know as we continue to, to study scripture where we're watching the israelites go through this same specific idea of fear and what it is to not know you know and how yah says you know i'm allowing this to happen you know to prove you to test you to see if you will follow my commandments or not you know so we who are believers, we have to look at this fear, you know, and I, and I like that you said, what does fear mean and what are we afraid of? Like, we have to weigh what our minds are telling us that we should be afraid of. We have to line that up and parallel that with, with what Yahuwah not only has showed us throughout scripture, that's why we have all of these historical, um, accounts that we read week after week but he shows us how he brought the people through you know and he promises that he'll do the same for us and i think ultimately you know the true 
the true believer doesn't really understand faith until Yahuwah, Yahushua is all that he has. You know, when there's nothing else to count on, when there's nothing else to go to, and you can only go to him and trust it. You know, that when you pray, you know, whether it be sickness, whether it be financial, whether it be family, whether it be a situation, trust that he will answer us, trust that he will take care of us, trust that he will provide, that he will rain down manna from the heavens, you know, that he will, you know, bring quail, <laughs> you know, that you open your door and breakfast falls in front of your door that you can cook it. Like, these are things, you know, that we have to, we have to put legs on. When we read them in scripture, we have to say, nah, this, this is what he's talking about to us. You know, and I think, you know, the scriptures you you, you uh, um, brought in are very self-explanatory as to where he wants our minds and hearts to be when it comes to trusting him for every, you know. You know, I often, you know, mention this when, um, when I talk about faith, you know, early on in my walk, I, I, I was close to a family that prayed for everything, like not just the normal things that we pray, like everything, like what choices to make. Okay, yeah, no, let's pray real quick. Boom, and then, you know, 20 second prayer, you know, five second prayer over over little mundane things that we think we shouldn't pray for and how they allow the father to guide you know so i think when it comes to us and under you know or, or misunderstanding or misinterpreting what we're seeing in front of our eyes whether it be the news whether it be you know uh, the policies that your employment is going to input because of the situation, like all of these things, like they, they, they could be scary. Like, what does that mean? Are they not going to let us back in office if we get a vaccine, if we don't get a vaccine? Well, am I going to be out of work? Like we have to consider these things, but trust them, you know, at the same time. Um, and know that he has us, know that he, he will provide every morsel that is needed for our health, for our, nourishment you know the rain that we need to, to to for water to drink you know when you go to the store and you don't see those things okay well i gotta get it from you y'all because it's not there you know what i mean so we have some real occurrences happening now that we can apply to the words that he speaks to us because he allows these things he says constantly throughout the scriptures so that but I can show you glory, my glory, you know. Um, so I'll leave it at that. It's uh it's so ties into to what we're gonna talk about this afternoon. Um, but I mean a refreshing word, you know, a reminder that yesterday's word is not enough for 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 today. Like I need to be seeking him daily. You know, I need to be praying to him daily for instruction. You know, because if we if we try to have if we try to use what we had yesterday, <laughs> our life is going to stink, literally. You know what I mean? So, and we'll talk about that later. But it just so ties into to this afternoon, man. Um, Exodus 16. So. It's a beautiful thing to see y'all work, you know, deal with the situations that I'm personally dealing with in my life and interwork it into the study and the message that we gather together to hear. You know what I mean? He gives us what we need on the Shabbat. So um, I'm excited. Uh, I enjoyed it. You know, a lot of times we're doing other things or we turn our camera off and we're we're doing other things and, and it, but I enjoyed the message today. You know what I mean? I, I I enjoyed listening to encouragement, you know. Um and we have to do that. We have to do that. You know, your the study that you put in, 
you know, to help us to bring us to an understanding is the most important part that we have to get. We have to understand what he's saying. If we don't understand what he's saying, we don't know what to do, you know. So in all things, seek understanding, he says, you know, that you may know. Praise Yah. Um, I could go all day, literally, but I'm going to let others speak. Praise Yah. Well, we do got all day. And uh, <laughs> you do have an opportunity to see how you look so good. I mean, it's just amazing. And, you know, when you get into this, you hear about fear, you know, even Sister Danny, you know, mentioned it last week about, you know, doing a study on the fear of Yahuwah. Well, I think that had a little bit of doing and then what Sister Amy's going through. And I hear so many other people expressing these days and even myself paying attention to what's going on in the world. I mean, you can see how people's hearts are fearful these days. And, you know, you get into a message like this, you hear the title, you think, man, is that going to be a positive message or a, 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 a you know, one of those that they really grab you? Or is it going to be on another, like a condemning kind of a message? You know, you don't, you know, when I got into this, I was like, man, this is really a positive, really encouraging. You know, as I was reading, I was like more and more, I got more encouraged and more, uh, a moon, I guess, from hearing what I just read today, you know, going through it and allowing it to speak throughout, you know, chronologically of the scripture, how he was speaking all the way through from the old to the new, having the, exactly the same message. You know, you, you, if you really say you trust in me, your Amuna is in me, what do you got to fear? You know, if you believe all the promises and the and all the instructions that have been given to us that we're learning, what do we have to fear? You know, fear is a lack of faith in, in him, a moon in him, and, and lack of confidence that he says he's going to do what he's going to do. Lack of knowledge or understanding of the word. Isn't that what we just heard? Why? That's the fear of Yahuwah right there. Basically, he wants you to understand his word, his instructions, so you understand how to live it, so you don't have to be fearful because now you know how to walk it out. You know what he's expecting of you. It's not a secret. You know, it's not some kind of hidden thing that I got to guess at how do I walk this out. He's telling us clearly, you know. But go ahead, brother. I, I, you got something? Yeah, no, I was just going to say, you know, it's, it's amazing to me how, you know, all of the things um, that we're instructed to do or not to do are there because it is like it's it's a natural thing for us to fear for those things so he's saying this is what you're going to feel but don't pay attention to it because this is what i want you to do so that that doesn't exist you know what i mean it's like you know the commandments and the and the and the, and the um instructions are there because there is another way to go and this is that way don't do that Okay, because that leads here. Go this way, right? So all of it is is because these are things that we will, will do and are going to do. But you don't have to listen to that mind. You don't have to listen to that emotion. You don't have to listen or taste that because it's it's nasty. I got something sweet for you, literally. I'm gonna drop it out the sky and it's gonna taste sweet. You know what I mean? Just chill out, you know, and I got you, you know, and I did, I just, uh, all right, I'm talking again, but I just wanted to throw that back in. Um, <laughs> it has a way of doing that, don't it? <laughs> it yeah. But nah, it's no, he, he instructs us based upon what he already knows is going to be our natural movement. He's saying, you're going to go here. Now it's, it's not if it's, it's when you go here with your heart, with your feet, with your mind, don't. Because that's that's going to be your natural inclination. That's going to be your temptation. But I'm telling you, stop at that stop sign. No, matter of fact, stop at that red light. Because really, past that light, it's a block wall that you really have to bust through to get to what you need on the bad side. But I'm going to take you this way. And it may, it may take you 40 years to get around the other side where that's only five minutes. But it's necessary so that you can get what you need. So praise Yah. Hey, praise Yah. 
going against that natural emotions on the inside the, 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 the you know they just stir up i think that those fears are something that, that we got to conquer we feel that we should remember this message and we should hunker down into what the word says and remember fear not do not fear do not be afraid you know if he's leading you if you really truly really believe that he's leading and guiding your steps then that should be in the forefront of your mind. Father, go with me. Father, I, I, I know you're with me. I'm not going to fear today. I know I've got to do this. I've got to go stand before this judge. I'm not going to fear because I know you're with me. I know that you're going to give me the words to speak. You know, we got to condition ourselves when we're going into that battle to adjust our armor, make sure we got everything on that he's told us, the full armor of the Yahuwah, right? So when, when that battle comes, those, those fiery darts can be deflected, you know, and you're protected. You know that there's more that's with you than, the, 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 than what's with them. So we should have this confidence about us knowing we got the biggest ob up here that, that's got our backs. We got the, we got the commander of the, of the armies of the Shemayim, Yahuwah Savahol is with us. Who can be against us? We may be like grasshoppers in their sight, but it doesn't matter. I got a little pebble that can take them down because it's it's him shooting the pebble with the accuracy. So we ain't got to fear these things. We just got to walk them out. Wherever he leads, we got to know there's a second exodus talks about in Scripture. So, you know, there may be a time where we got to be led out of Mitzrayim too, out of this whatever is coming kind of thing, you know. All I'm saying get ourselves right so we can hear him so we don't have to be afraid of what's coming. You know, no matter if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear that evil that's all around me. We can feel it. We can sense it. We know it. So it's no secret that it's there. You know, we just got to know how are we going to come in. We're confident. We come in in the name and in the authority of Yahuwah. Just like David did. He couldn't have did what he did if he had fear, if he didn't know who was with him, who had his back, who his Alhim is. You think he's going to do that by himself? He's this little guy going up against his biggest guy in the, in the lands. <laughs> he wants to tear him apart. He wasn't scared because he knew. So take that with us in the battle in our daily walks. That's all I got to say. Hallelujah. All right, Brother J uh, Johnny L., are you there? Shabbat Shalom, brother. If you're with us, I'd like to get your thoughts. If not, I can come back to you at a later time. I just think I know. All right, I'm coming back to you. I see Brother Mecca had his hand up, so you're next, Brother Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Now, another timely message. Definitely just proof once again the Ruach is. is is moving and sending the same message. Uh, Cause this week I was thinking about this and meditating on, you know, how, you know, we're, we're in this time, you know, we're in this time and we, we hear about the plots and the plans of the wicked and things they want to do. And, you know, it's, it always takes me back to that, that passage where it talks about, you know, a king before he goes to battle, you know, he counts the cost, you know, he counts the cost of, of, of what, of the details of the battle to make sure that he can take over that army, you know, and, you know, we know Yahuwah when, before he sent Yahusha, he already counted the cost and Yahusha knew that, you know, Yahusha knew that the, the cost was already counted for. Him. He knew the father could resurrect him from the dead. So what is it to, what is it to put his life down for, you know, what is it to lay his life down for his, his brethren, you know, because he knows Yahusha can, uh, Yahuwah can, can raise it back up. So the cost has already been counted, you know, and that's, you know, one of the areas where I really, that's a scripture that really helps me, you know, be at peace and not, and not have that fear, you know, and, and in the meantime, then it, it allows me to continue working. You know, there's the passage that says, uh, it's in first, second Timothy chapter, uh, I think this is chapter one, verse, um, Verse seven, it says, for Elohim hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. 
And so when I think about this passage, what, what really resonates to me in this is when you look at what it says he's given us, he says, not, not the spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. What we know, when you really know your identity in Yahuwah, when you know that you're, you're a child of Yah's, you know, when you know what it means to be a child of Yah, you know, you are seeking to walk in that power and authority that he has given us, you know, as Yahushua did, you know, and you're seeking to walk in that love because, you know, when you love your brother, you love the fellow man, you know, you love those because we're all created in the image and likeness of Yah. When you know that and you walk in that love, you know, and you, you understand the power that you have being made in Yah's image and likeness, you have a sound mind because you know that Yah has your back because of his promise. And so for me, it's like, instead of kind of to what Rai was just pulling out, you see all these things going on. Are you going to be like Kepha when he stepped off the boat and took his eyes off Yahusha? Or are you going to be, you know, are you going to learn from that and say, look, I need to keep my eyes on Yahusha. I can't be worried about these other situations, these things, because Yah already knows what I need. He's going to make sure he provides for me. You know, he's going to make sure I have his promise as you brought out. You know, we have that promise that we can, we can rely and sit back on. And so we keep our eyes on Yahusha. We keep our eyes on the way we're supposed to walk. On the belief, on the belief we're supposed to have, you know, and we keep in it. In it, by doing so, we have that sound mind, knowing that, knowing who we are, knowing that when we walk a certain way, you who is going to keep his promise to us, you know. And so we just keep that. We have a sound. We sit back with a sound mind, and, and we keep our eyes on Yahushua, and we continue pressing forward, doing what we're supposed to do. And at the end of the day, we've already been we've already been counted for. Yah has already, he's already counted for us in the resurrection, in the redemption, you know, of, uh, of the righteous. He's already counted. He's, we're already counted for. So you keep that in mind and, and, you know, you really have, especially in these times now when you see people worried about everything, we can really sit back with that shalom and that peace, that, that, that sound mind that, that he's offering us, that he's giving us. And so. Now, nah, just just a time, very timely message, brother. Very timely. I praise Yah for that because it was definitely much needed. You know, definitely much needed message. Hallelujah! You made me think about something when you spoke about him uh, uh, looking at Yahusha and taking his eyes off off of the Word, because Yahusha is the Word. The same thing that we're told to keep our eyes on that gives us the fear of, of Yahuwah. He takes his eyes off of Yahusha, the Word. All of a sudden, the fear comes upon him, and what's he do? He begins to sink. Is that a perfect analogy of us? For you know, we have to stay focused on the word, allow that word to keep us <laughs> grounded on him, so that we don't begin to sink and fall when the troubles come, and then, you know those things that naturally bring fear to people rise up. You know, you you said it. That's a that's a big key, I think. So. Hallelujah. Brother uh, Jody L, I see you. I see you. Shabbat Shalom, brother. What you got for us this morning? Oh, where'd he go? There he is. Uh, shalom. Can you guys hear me? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> All right. So you guys, I mean, everybody was saying a lot of really good really good points to apply to, to the walk. Um, can you guys hear me? Are you break, Am I breaking up? No, you're doing good. Go ahead, brother. All right. Here. So, so um, what I wanted to say is, is uh, we have a principle in scripture where it says, it says perfect Perfect love cast out all fear. Right? Perfect love cast out all fear. And there's there's an emphasis on what love means that allows fear to be casted oh, yeah. out. Hey guys. Be quiet. Be quiet. Um 
love is supposed to be able to eliminate fear. Fear has has an element that's in the thoughts. Every time you see uh, in scripture, he says, fear not, it's because they're creating something, something in their mind to be afraid of that, that, that doesn't exist. When Gabriel came to Zechariah, he had to tell him, fear not. Why? Because he has in his mind something that's going to happen to him. Samson's parents, they said, oh, we're going to die. You know, and and Samson's mother was like, oh, if we was going to die, we would have died already. You know, so there's this element of fear in the mind that doesn't exist. And this is what creates that fear. So it's because you're paying attention to those false thoughts. Your focus is those thoughts. So when you say love, right, uh, like what Brother Mecca was saying, if you love your, your fellow brother, it means that you're paying attention to your brothers and sisters. It means that your focus is on them. You're, you're acknowledging and paying attention. Your thoughts is directed towards them the way that Yah's thoughts is directed towards us. So if our mind is consumed, love, right? If our mind is consumed with the growth, with the benefit, with the strengthening, with the encouraging of not only yourself, but also the brethren and the people around you, when do you have time to think about some type of ghost coming out and killing you, monster eating you? You won't have any time to think about those things because your thoughts is occupied. So when it says love, it says uh, that we are, Israel is the apple of my eye. That word apple, I'm not sure why they say apple, but the Hebrew word is pupil. The pupil of my eye. Israel is the pupil of my eye. David is the pupil of my eye. It means that my focus, my focus is on you. That means everything that I see has to be, it's for you. So when we focus back on Yah, every thought has to be steered. He gave us power to steer the mind back to the original focus. And, you know, so when Peter was, like I think uh, Mecca mentioned, and when Peter was focused, he didn't sink. But when he lost focus, he sunk. And all he saw was the storm, but we didn't, he's not, we didn't get into his mind. He could have thought about drowning. He could have thought about sharks eating him. He could have thought of all these made up things that allows you to deviate from the focus. So uh, when it says that perfect love cast out all fear, love entails focus. Love entails you paying attention. When you love somebody, you pay attention to them. Your thoughts is towards them. You think about them. You know, so if we redirect ourselves, if it says love, yeah, with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength, what does that mean? That means every single every single aspect of your being has to be directed towards him so nothing else can creep in and share the same platform that Yah is supposed to have in our minds. You know, that's how it casts out fear. We can't cast out fear if we're entertaining thoughts that doesn't come from him. You know, because the moment that Satan has place, he's going to, if you or crack the door open, he's going to kick it open all the way through. So we cannot give him place with anger, with, you know, irritability. All these other emotions that does not glorify Yah's character has to be consumed by the by your focus. When, you, when Yah loves us, what does that mean? Does it mean that Yah doesn't love the wicked? He says, I love, I love the world that I gave my son. So we can't say that he doesn't love the wicked. But we know that if you are wicked, he doesn't apply his attention to you. He doesn't give you his strength. He doesn't pour his blessing on you. You receive curses. You receive consequences for your actions. You see what I'm saying? So when we see Yah's love, we see him paying attention to you, him focusing on you. So when you supposedly love Yah, where's your attention? Where's your focus? When a situation like coronavirus or something worse happens, where's your focus going to be? Where your focus is, that's where your attention is going to be. That's where your heart and your mind is going to be. But if you're continuously looking at these earthly things and allowing it to, to consume your thoughts, then fear will consume the love of Yah. So you have to, we have to learn how to conquer this mind. This is the biggest problem. This is the biggest problem that we have uh, it's ourselves. We don't battle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. And if you look at where these principalities and powers are, the strongholds is right here. We need to tear down these strongholds in order to allow Yah's word to consume and to have con to conquer our minds. 
You know what I mean? So this is how sin, this is how all these things is removed. And yeah, it's going to be a struggle. That's why he calls it exercise. That's why he calls it a war. He says that we are warring not with fleshly things, but with spiritual things. So it's a call the war for a reason. It's not meant to be easy, but the decision is simple. The decision is simple. We need to focus on Yah, like you said, Brother Rick, put your mind focusing on his promises. His promises are yea and amen. That's what it says in scripture. They're not yes and no. They're not maybe. They're yes and so let it be. That's it. So when we look at his word that way, like what Brother Rod said, yeah, we don't got no food. Guess where it's coming? It's coming from the sky. It has to because his promises is yes. His promises is not maybe. His promises does not depend on the situation around us. His promises depends on whether or not he's able to accomplish that. And if he's able in your mind, that means that his the, the ability for his ability consumes your thoughts and you are in joy because you know he's going to do something. You don't even have to know what he's going to do. You just have to know he's going to do something. So praise Yah because this is this is definitely a characteristic that his people need to have, especially right now, to fear not. You know, so praise Yah. I love you, man. That was that was beautiful. Man, you stir up some stuff, you know? I mean, right on. Right on. I can't even say nothing else with that one. That was good stuff right there. Bro, Rod, you got anything you want to say about any of that? Because we're going to go to Sister Amy next when you are when you got done. Any thoughts you yeah, could come up with? Uh, that, that was beautiful. Um, <laughs> the, the only thing, though, that, that, that I was going to ask John, like when, when you say made up, you know, um, I, I want to try to understand that made up because those those things that he's telling us not to fear, those are real things. Like Goliath is real, you know, famine is real. Um, and I think that in the midst of those real things that we could naturally be afraid of, that our focus still has to be on him. That's why he says, I'm going to prove you in the midst of these things, I allow these things to happen and, and, and I want to see if you're going to follow my command. So my question is when you said they're not real or they're made up, what, what were you referring to? I'll let you go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> that's a, no, that's a, that's a, it, that, that makes sense. Like if there's a famine, the reality is that there's a famine. The fear is that I'm going to starve to death. That's the, that's the made up aspect of the reality. The reality is that there's a famine. The fear is that Yah is not going to be with me and I'm going to starve to death and nobody's going to provide for me and I can't get no food. And I'm all those things is the made up stuff. So the reality, when you're looking at the circumstances around you, the reality is that Yah is, is the reality. His promises is the reality. So if there's a pestilence, if there's coronavirus, the reality is, oh, this is going to happen. I'm going to be, uh, woe is me. I'm dismayed. Uh oh, I think we lost him in mid-sentence. That, that makes me go ahead and say this because I knew exactly what he was referring to because I've said this myself to people. You'll get into so what scripture says is that we don't get dismayed like the heathen gets dismayed. We don't get discouraged. We don't by the uh, uh, say that again. Say that again, bro. You were frozen for in in moment of time for a couple minutes there, so I was like just recapping, and then you came back alive. You know, it was like okay. <laughs> I was just talking. Um, what I was saying is that brother Rod is uh, here. That's a good question because what happens is that we start to make up what may happen because of the reality to us when that, when the consequences of the reality doesn't apply to us. Um, when we, when we get so discouraged about insecurities and we're like, Oh, the father's going to leave me. The father's going to forsake me when his promise says, I will not leave you or forsake you. So we're looking at our situation and we're like, Oh, I don't have no food. Oh, the father forsake me. No, that's a made up thought. You added a thought to the reality. Oh, there's a famine. So the father's not going to be able to provide. I won't be able to provide for my children. We're going to die. See, that's not the reality that we're supposed to be focused on. Accepting the reality that there's a famine is one thing. Adding 
a situation that makes it worse for yourself, knowing that Yah is with you, is the made up part. You know what I mean? And I, I think that you mentioned it as well. Like our minds need to be focused on the promises and the reality. You know, and, um, I hope that that made sense. Um, yeah, it made sense, complete sense to me. I understand what you were saying because I've said this myself many times that, you know, we have a tendency of creating something that will never happen. We know something is, is coming against us, right? But all of a sudden we know we got to go before the judge. But now all of a sudden we start thinking of all of these bad things that are going to happen to us. And we stress ourselves out. We worry, burden ourselves and we get it before the judge and it's nowhere near what, what we thought it was going to be. So we created this fear ourselves out of something that we thought might happen. And we focus on that part of it, which takes away our shalom and creates fear where when we get there, then we see, dang, that wasn't nowhere what I thought it was going to be. And I, I had all of those fears and all those emotions and stresses for nothing. That's what I knew you were trying to say, I believe. So, you know, I, but there's also the reality of real fears, you know, that created in the environment around us too. We just don't need to exacerbate the real fears and make them more than what they really are, I guess. All right. Yeah. Right. So, so, so now the, so the distinction was that the person is creating these things that are, that are going to happen versus trusting on him. But what I right. was saying, what I was saying, I think also that goes with that is that, and, and you said it, there's a difference in the way we look at it than the way the heathen or someone that doesn't believe in him looks at it. And the reality for, for them is that Goliath is going to kill them because <laughs> he does, they don't follow Yah. Yah has prepared stones to smack him in the forehead to kill him, where the heathen does not. So that's what I was saying as in real things, but I definitely get it, what you're saying. Like we create in our minds a reality that's not true based upon that fear. So, got it. See, this is good stuff. Anything else, brother, you like that before we move to the next one? No, there was so much, you know, you, brother Rod, Mecca, you know, it brought out so many points. It's like the, the, the greatest enemy is our own thoughts. Even in scripture talks about sin. It says we are enticed by our own desires. You know, we are, we are drawn away by our own mind. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 10, it breaks it down saying that all those strongholds that we war against is nowhere else is just in your mind. If we break down our these strongholds and we submit, guess what? When we get thrown in prison, guess what we're going to do? We're going to be singing to Yah, just like Paul did when he was in prison, singing to Yah. All the soldiers heard him singing and then, you know, reciting scriptures and psalms. You see what I'm saying? When when the early believers, they were thrown in, in front of uh, Roman lions, guess what they were doing? They were singing to Yah. Even though the situation around them was a certain way, they had a different reality in their mind. They're like, go ahead and kill this body. My reality is better. It has, I have a better outcome, even in this situation. But if I'm focusing on this lion, then you're then 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 we're gonna focus on complete obliteration, and we're not even gonna consider the fact that Yah is our life. And if we have Him, it doesn't even matter if we die; we will live. You know. So we have to have that that mindset of the reality, and our reality cannot be restricted to this earth's situation or the circumstances on this earth. It has to be in Yah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Good stuff. Sister Amy, you're up and I'm coming to you, brother Nathaniel. Shabbat shalom, sister. Oh. Okay, unmute again. There you go. Sorry, I pressed unmute at the same time as you unmuted me. So, wow, this is amazing because obviously the things I've been going through, I've been in a right mess, like full of fear, and then I've been okay, and then I've been full of fear, and then I've been okay, and then I've been full of fear, then I've been okay. Because obviously I am up, I, up against, uh, well, up, I don't want to say against, up before uh, a judge on uh, Wednesday next week. And wow, you know, even just today, the father and this meeting, just talking to the father and showing me things and, and just, you know, looking at the, he, he speaks to me and like, you know, show me, well, look at me, look to me. If it's this outcome or that outcome, 
let's just have a discussion. So, you know, so if let's say if I went to prison, I'm just, you know, giving an example of what my discussion with the father's been today. And he's like, well, but, but, but what if it's my will to send, you? and this is just a discussion. It's not saying that's what it is. What if it's the father's will to go there because someone's in there who I need to speak to, you know? I, I'm just giving an example of this is how the father's been counseling to me to help me with this, like, I'm drowning, I'm drowning, like, I'm like, I know you're not going to save me, Peter, Kefa, you know, I was doing a Kefa, and uh, definitely in a real situation, you know, I, a lot of stuff coming at me, you know, being accused of, like, so many things that is not real, and <clears throat> I've been, you know, I'm, I'm going on my own to the court without a solicitor because I believe that's what I'm being ministered by the Father to do. Um, and the way it kept coming up consistently, defender, defender. And, and obviously, I'm writing all my, 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 you know, like a solicitor, all my stuff that I need for this court date. And then today, after all that hard work of three days of hardly no sleep, no food, <laughs> staying up, writing all this stuff that, you know, and then today I'm like, I don't think I'm even going to need any all of that. I might just need to just go with my Bible and just, because I don't really want to say even what my accusers have done to me because I'm a defender and I'm a defender of mankind and that's what we are. And so... If I go in it and say, well, you know, this happened because she or whatever did this to me and did this to my son and they did this and that and they did. I'm just looking in the mirror the, of, of the accusers who are accusing me. I'm looking just like them. You know, so this is <laughs> as you, a new thing for me today, a new day, a new day with Shabbat with Abba. And, uh, you know, he's my defense and I'm called to be a light and a defender of mankind, to be a light to all of them, even the worst of the worst, even the those who want to make themselves an enemy to me. I mean, what's the point in me or any of us arguing with the deaf, dumb and blind, so to speak? They can't see, they can't, they have eyes to see, but they do not see. They have ears to hear, but they cannot hear. And they have a mouth to speak, but they do not speak the things that bring life. I claim to have eyes to see, ears to hear. I, you know, I, that's what I'm meant to be awakened. I've been redeemed. I've been brought into the light. So why am I going to go in and accuse back my accusers um i'm not going to do that i'm going to baruch them because this is what he gave me today which is the the open palm the calf which means bend allow tame cover open and baruch bless always always and so let the truth be revealed we will come back, but I think the truth be known always is best. All right, Brother Nathaniel, Shabbat Shalom to you, brother. Shabbat Shalom, you can hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. All right. Um, Proverbs 9, 4, excuse me, 9, 5. Come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave the simple ones and live. Walk in the way of understanding. He who reproves, who reproves a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wrong one gets himself a blemish. Do not reprove a scoffer lest he hate you. Reprove a wise one, and he loves you. Give instruction to a wise one, and he is wiser still. Teach a righteous one, and he increases in learning. Here it is, 9.10, Proverbs. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the set-apart one is understanding. So we see that the first thing that he, that he talks about is come eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed, you know, and this is, uh, you know, John uh, chapter six, you know, uh, he who does not uh, uh, eat of my body and drink of my blood. Um, 
And then they start talking about leave the simple ones and live. So like, you know, don't be sitting there hanging around. Iron sharpens iron. You know, clay doesn't sharpen iron. Um, uh, and, and live and walk in the way of understanding. And then it talks about, uh, about scoffers and, uh, um, and uh, uh, rebukers and, and how, how trying to reprove a scoffer or, or uh, teach a, uh, someone who's rebuking, um, you're going to get blemishes and you're going to have issues, you know, and not, not to say that you aren't supposed to correct people, but understand uh, um, that, that uh, uh, says that, you know, the, leave the simple ones and live, you know, but then it talks about give instruction to a wise one. Um, and he is wiser still teach a righteous one, right? He increases in learning. And then, you know, again, you know, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the set apart one is understanding. So here we have knowledge, we have understanding, we have wisdom. Um, and, uh, um, and then, you know, with the scriptures that you pulled out, you have uh, um, uh, Proverbs 15, 33, the fear of Yahuwah is the discipline of wisdom and before esteem is humility. Um, so now here we have the, you know, the, um, uh, the fear of Yahuwah is the, is the beginning of wisdom. And then the scripture that you pulled out in Proverbs 15, 33, the fear of Yahuwah is the discipline of wisdom. So uh, what is discipline? Well, discipline is uh, a disciple, right? Uh, you know, a Talmudim, you know, the disciples, um, it's a disciplined one. It's someone who, who, uh, um, who applies uh, the teachings that they have. So we have, we have knowledge, which is like a, it's like a raw material um, uh, that, that you acquire, you pull it up out of the ground, you, you hunt for it, you seek for it, right? Um, and, then, and then with that, that raw material, with that knowledge, uh, then, then you, you get a, an insight on that, on, on how, to, how to start um, uh, faceting it, uh, how, how to start uh, uh, in which order and, and, and how to manufacture it. And then with that, you get that understanding, but then you can have that knowledge, you can have that insight, you can have that, you know, that understanding, but until you, you have disciplined it, um, uh, um, until, until you, you, you learn not just what it is in, in, in the situation, but, and, and not also what to do, but then to do it, that's the discipline that they have, you know, and that's the, the, um, the fear of Yahuwah is the discipline of, of wisdom, you know, and, and, um, I like what the brothers had, had pulled out there, um, you know, John three fourteen. um, everyone remembers three sixteen. um, uh, three fourteen of, of John and as Moshe lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, right? That's the Nehushtuan, um, uh, the coppery servant as Moshe lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the son of Adam, the son of man has to be lifted up that word, uh, even so in the Greek, um, it's a uh, huto and it means, uh, in this manner or in like way. And so when you look at that parable of, of what happened, what was going on? Well, the, um, uh, they were the, uh, the, the coppery or the, the serpents, the fiery serpents uh, were sent in, they were biting the people. Right. And, and so Moshe was told to make this serpent. And so that the, um, it, it wasn't necessarily to, it was to keep the people alive. It wasn't to like kill off all the, all the, all the things that were biting them, but it was that whenever the people would look upon the, uh, the Nehushtuan, that these people, uh, that, that they, that they wouldn't, uh, be affected by, by the, uh, the problems around them because their focus, right. The, I like what brother Jadiel brought out the pupil of their eye, uh, their, their focus, they were looking at nothing else but that, but whenever their eyes would look away, that's when they started to get if, uh, affected by these fears, these, these legitimate things that were happening to them. Uh, but, but the, when their focus was on what they were supposed to do. So even so as the Nehushtuan, so too must the son of man be lifted up. Um, and so, um, you know, as we know that when the dove uh, descended, uh, um, you know, or, or like a dove descended um, uh, from the Ruach, you know, the Ruach HaKodesh from, from Shamaim, uh, Yahuwah, um, uh, his Ruach descended upon, upon his only begotten son. Well, when a dove has tunnel vision. Uh, when it lands, it, it is only looking at where it's landing. So that means that, that the apple of Yahuwah's eye, the pupil of Yahuwah's eye, the pupil of the, of the Ruach, like a dove, was descending on, on Yahusha. Um, and, and so, and so that's his only focus. And, and so, so too must, must the son of man be lifted up. Our only focus must be on, on Yahusha and, and not to have these cares of the world. So, um, uh, kind of in, in summary, um, you know, we have, a uh, um, uh, Matthew 10, 28, do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, but rather fear him who's able to destroy both being and body in Gehenna. 
Um, and then two verses later, so do not fear you are worth more than many sparrows. So Matthew 10, 28, do not fear those who kill the body, but then fear him who can kill both, right? And then it says, so do not fear. So, so do not fear him, fear me, but do not fear. Uh, that's essentially what it's saying. And that's kind of what, what, the, what the situation is, you know, uh, the fear of Yahuwah is the discipline of, of wisdom. So we need, we need to have that fear uh, uh, not, not, in, a, um, not in, a, in a worldly sense, but that, that fear should be like a drive. Uh, um, you know, um, uh, fear him who can kill the body and the soul, but do not fear. That's kind of, that's essentially what Matthew, you know, 10, 28, and then 31, you know, say, you know, say, do not fear him, fear me, but do not fear, uh, is essentially what that's saying. So, you know, we need to have fear, uh, in its proper place and its proper use. And that fear should be like, like, um, uh, like for instance, if you're in a, if you're in a marriage, right. Um, and, and, uh, um, uh, you're you're out in the world uh um, you know walking in the way not in the world but you know you're you're you know you know amongst it and you're you're out in you know um out in town or something and some let's say some you know person of the opposite sex you know, you know i'm a man so i'll, I'll say you know woman so some woman comes up you know in in, in you know if if you know in a marriage covenant and a woman comes up and and there's like an attraction and talking to you and trying to like start some spark you know she doesn't necessarily know what uh, what your what your situation is but but like you know someone who's who's incorrect mindset would would be like oh yeah well let me try this out let me let me talk to her let me let me go down that road and, and just kind of see where things go you know maybe i have some issues in my personal life or this or that no 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 the fear should be that i don't want to lose my wife i don't want to lose my wife and so I, 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 I fear losing my relationship more than I, than, than I, I care about whatever this thing is that's, that's before me. So like, that's where we should be with Yahuwah. Um, uh, we should fear him so much that we don't want to lose him. We should fear him so much that we don't want to lose our covering uh, that we are under. We should fear him so much that we don't want to do anything to disrespect him so that he turns from us because we would have turned from him. That's the fear that we need to have, you know, in, in check also. There's, you know, there's many pieces to the, to the many droplets to the body of water of the understanding of fear, you know. And so kind of like in that understanding, that's kind of how I also see fear is that, that I fear more losing losing he who can kill the soul and the body and being separate from him and being apart from him more than i fear the the serpents biting me in the world more than i, I fear the the legitimate problems that are that are around me i fear more about about the 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 real ultimate long-term goal of not making it into shamayim you know not not seeing jack jack again that's you know not not being with my mispica that's the that's the fear that that's there so um you know shabbat shalom that's a great point that you brought out, you know. You got to have a fear greater for him. And it's more about, like you said, losing him or coming where he takes his ruach from you, that kind of thing where that, that's fearful. That's what David feared the most out of everything, you know. He had done all these things that he knew was wrong, but he was fearful that he was going to take his ruach, which is utmost important to us, so keep him in that position all the other things really pale in comparison like you said all these other things can be biting at you shooting at you trying to harm you but when you have your eyes focused on him he becomes your defense he becomes your your side guard your your rear guard all of those kind of guards where you don't have to worry about that let him do that part of it keep your eyes on him yeah that's essentially so fear who you should fear in the appropriate manner, yeah. All right, brother uh, JP, are you with us? Ah, uh, there he is. Shabbat shalom, brother. Good morning. Allah. Shabbat shalom, Miss Parker. How you guys doing? I, I'm glad to see everybody today. I love the I love the verse that the brother in the he pulled out. I was like thinking about that. Uh, the um Matthew ten twenty eight, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. That's a beautiful verse, you know. Uh, you know, a while back, like um, my grandma, she was she talked about fearing and like the reverence aspect of it, and I and I never I never really understood it so. 
but she brought that out to me and, and I was like, wow, like that's interesting. And because when you normally read it from just the English perspective, the word, you know, people are they they have this mindset to say, oh, it says fear, like, like, you know, be shivering in a sense, like, you know, you're going to tremble in the way of, you know, scared. But when you brought out, like you brought out today, the, the aspect of reverence, of fear and reverence. And then I started to, you know, take it into consideration of how my children see me or how I see my parents as a child. When I was a child, I would see my mom, you know, because she was probably like the primary one in, in my life as a parent to, where I would fear her in that way. But, you know, but I loved her. She she gave me everything I needed. She was there for me emotionally, everything. So, you know, it's like interesting to when you take that into a perspective of, of our natural life right now and then you you start to think about the father in that way and you're, you're like you know like it's so much reverence like it, it's not even one word i guess it would be like respect and all these things that come into mind when i think about our heavenly father and how much like i want to please him you know i want to please him and then when you do something and you fall you fall short or something and you're like, oh man, like how much I disappoint him right now, like instantly. And, and you know, I've learned to just repent instantly. Like, like don't don't wait till later. You might, you know, forget. You know, and so, you know, all these things come up when I think about the heavenly Father and the reverence that we're to give him, and and the way he, you know, he's uh he gives us that that position of choice. You know, to either you're going to, you are, you're not, you know. And so I just was thinking about that. And then the one portion that I was thinking about also with scripture was in the, in the section, I was, as I was hearing your study, um, in uh, Genesis 46 uh, with Jacob, he says, um, it, it pretty much is, is talking about Jacob going to, to Israel, I mean, to uh, Egypt, and and Yah tells him like, "Fear not, like, uh, like I'm gonna be with you." Like, and so I, I was like, "Wow, like that's, you know, it, it's it's just amazing, you know, when you when you truly allow and you like you let yourself submit yourself to Yah's will, and you just you fear not, you go where He says to go, and you're like, I'm not even like worried no more. I'm just gonna go, and we were talking about that like. You just go, even though there might be trouble and it might look dim over there. If that's where the Ruach is leading you and you got Yahuwah with you, the Ruach, and you just like, all right, I'm going, like, I'm going to go over here. Whether it's a group of people, it's an area, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like, you're just like, I'm fear not. He's like, in my heart, he's like, fear not, just go. And then, and then the outcome is always beautiful. It's always beautiful because then you see him and you say, oh, you come home and you're like, wow, like what came out of it was just beautiful. So, so just uh, want to share that and uh, Shabbat Shalom. Love you guys. Hallelujah. That was beautiful, man. <laughs> ah, I love that perspective. You know, when you get a little bit of a, one of those moments when you start to understand what maybe your grandmother was telling you, huh? You know? It didn't make sense a lot then, but he's given you the ability to understand it now. That's a beautiful thing. That's another level of understanding and wisdom you have there, brother. You know, as we apply it, it continues to get stronger. We become, like he said, you're going to make your head, your forehead like flint. You know, it's going to be, you're going to be like focused. Like, you, it don't matter what comes, you know, bullheaded. You're just going to be like, nah, I got this one. I know what this means now. You know, let, let come on, let's go and take it on. You know, you ain't got to fear that no more because you know who's with you. All you got to do is stand. Stand it on and let him do his mighty work, right? If we just will take that into heart, that right there, no matter what you're coming up against, stand there and, and, and trust and be in awe of what he does because it's going to blow your mind usually when you actually really do surrender and Hey, no matter what comes, let me just sit here and see what happens. You know, let's let, let me see how he's going to deliver me from this one. You know, I'm innocent. 
I didn't do anything wrong, but I've still been charged. And now that brings this song uh, that I used to listen to when I was back in the in the Christian world. By uh, I think his name was Jeff Moat. You know, when mercy walks in, you know, you're in this courtroom before the judge, and and, you, and you're guilty. And what happens? Mercy walks in, and you know, he sets you free. You know, it's like. You know, that's a beautiful thing to understand. And then you, the deliverance comes and all of a sudden that fear turns into rejoicing and praising and thanksgiving. And now your your relationship goes just that little bit more deeper because now you know. The next time something comes, you don't got to worry so much because you know the one that's in control of it all. He knows the beginning from the end, right? He knows the very numbers of the hairs on your head. You, you, you think that he's going to let one thing happen outside of his will for you? If you're his, you ain't got to worry about it. He got you. So that's a word of encouragement to, that goes into this. So praise Yahuwah. Thank you, brother. As always, much appreciated. All right, I got Brother Kevin. Then I got Brother Joseph and Francia. And then I'm coming to you, Sister Amy. And then we'll see where we're at with time after that. So let's go on, Brother Kevin. Kevin. Shabbat Shalom, assembly, family, elders, deacon, brothers and sisters. Shabbat Shalom. The two words that stuck out to me, I see you up there. Uh, the two words that stuck out to me was in fear, false evidence against reality. And that holds true in this walk ever so much. The other one I'm a coattail on, Nathaniel, talk about discipline. Discipline has always been in my mind being military or ex-military. And that was uh, obedience in the absence of order. The word being order. And then you got to do, you know, when he's standing right there, you're going to do, yes, sir. Look straight ahead. Don't look left and right. And as soon as he takes out and he's not there, do you look left and right? You know, do you move your head? Are you still disciplined? Are you still looking straight ahead like he told you? So those are the two things that I got from this wonderful message this morning. Beautiful message. Shabbat shalom. Hey, I, know, I understand what it means to stand at attention, brother. <laughs> I you been, know what it is. <laughs> been there, done that many years. So uh, that is a very good description of discipline when he's when he's right there, right there beside you yeah you're gonna do what you what you're supposed to do but what you're gonna do when you don't see him right there looking at you he's still looking at you but you don't know and then you go over there and peek to your left or your right <laughs> gotta be disciplined i agree with you that's a that's a big factor here thank you brother seems like all them crumbs are cleaned out hallelujah all right brother joseph you're up or Sister Francia, are you there? Shabbat shalom, Brother Rick. Hey, and, shabbat shalom. Yeah, my wife just wanted to add, share a couple of things. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. So when I was listening to your teaching today, this verse came to my mind. Um, Revelation 21.8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So the fearful and the unbelieving are counted as liars, as, you know, adulterers, as everything that Yahuwah hates. So I think that was important to add, you know, that if we fear and we don't believe, we are not different from the hidden. That's a great point. Very good point. That's a sobering point <laughs> when you think about it in that sense, but that's the reality. Uh, thank you for bringing that out. You know, we have to really understand our actions and how they really, how they look to Yahuwah, you know. And we can put on a, on a fake mask in front of our friends and our our family and that and you know even even our fellows here you know that we're all 
as we used to say in the church, holier than thou kind of thing, till you get on out the out the doors, and then all and then it all changes. You know, there is no discipline, uh, just a free for all. And in this walk, I see that the discipline, remaining focused, understanding your calling and how you're supposed to walk out this in obedience is key, you know, because if you're walking in that, what do you really have to fear if you know that you're in right order with him, that, you know, his righteousness is placed upon you, you know, his, his promises are there with you, you know, if you're actually in that place where he says, you're okay when you're here, just don't step outside of here, you know, and then that's when we get off track and then we're vulnerable, you know, so that's important. We want to stay focused on him, on his promises, his word. Therefore, no matter what's going on, what, what, what appears to be coming at us doesn't necessarily make it so. So, you know, we always have to bring to light the truth of the matter and allow that truth to set us free. Yeah. Sister Amy, you're back. Shabbat Shalom once again. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I forgot to say it before. So I was I always get a bit nervous when I first speak every week, although it doesn't seem it because I'm always a talker. <laughs> I actually do get I say that I actually do still get nervous saying that Ruben got bit on the ear by a dog for climbing on a fence. <laughs> it's not bad, it's just a little nip, so that was interesting. But um so I liked what uh, Brother Kevin said right at the there, you know, the obedience, obedience, the absence of order. Very, very good, very, very good little tiny, you know, message there. Um, when I was younger, before I knew the father, I was, I was in army cadets. I was a bit of a tomboy when I was younger, and I was in army cadets. And I remember uh, we were all in, on parade, you know, in military. He was talking about military. And I know, and as you know, I've shared and other brothers and sisters, I know he's been, like, kind of training me and kind of, like, in a kind of military way. So one second, Ruben's just coming back. Ruben, please. I got a question. No, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry. No problem, we'll come back to you. Brother Nathaniel Stone, got your hand up. Then I see you, Sister Robbie. You got something you'd like to add, Brother Nathaniel? Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask a, a question. What was that verse that Sister uh, Francia pulled out? I just, I, I didn't, I caught, I heard what she said. I just didn't hear the verse where that was at. Was it Revelation 21? Wait, say that again because it cut out on me. Uh, I'll let, I believe I'm going to have her reconfirm, but I think it was Revelation 21, she said. That okay, that's all I wanted to know. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, 21 verse 8. 8, there you go. Thank you, sister. Thank you. All righty, sister Robbie, uh, go ahead. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. As we were going over... Can you come TV, towards your mic a little bit, please? You're very far away. As we, can you hear me now? Still very, very low. Oh, okay. Let me see. How about now? Is it better? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you seem so far away for some reason. Okay, very, how very about faint. Now? Is that better? No, not really. Okay. Not sure why. I guess try coming back to me. I'm may want to call back in, Sister Robbie. I'm not sure why your audio is not working. You're just so far away, I can't hear you. All right, uh, we'll try this again, Sister Amy. Then I'm coming to you, Sister Danny. Yeah, sorry. It seems every time I talk, the, the, the Ruben runs and bounces through the door from off his scooter and then comes right in and, you know, he just talks. Let's, let's say it before he jumps in again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So when I was in the army that years ago when I was younger, because um, I, I, I was, we were standing on the parade and one of the sergeants, you know, they really yell in your face when you're right in your face. And he was screaming in my face and said, you know, I was a cadet at the time and I was going to be about to be promoted to Lance Corporal. So he, 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 but I didn't know that. He shouted in my face, Cadet Rook! And I, I stood to attention and done what you need to do and the, you know, the salute. I said, yes, sir! Or yes, sergeant. And he said, jump! You know, so he told me to jump and I went, how high, sir? 
the whole lot of them just fell on the floor. And that's when, when brother said, obedience is the absence of order. It, it, it got a remark. It made me jump back into a past shift, you know, back to when I was in the army cadets. And he said, I said, it made me laugh. My response and everybody else, you know, how high, uh, you know, look at how high to get it accurate. Because my fear is a lot of my fear as, as you know, as well, is getting it wrong, you know, not, not, um, not doing what Yahoo wants me to do on the day accurately at the time, perfectly like A, B, C, D, incorrect order, because I'm frightened of like other people or his message not being delivered. Correct. And, and that's the biggest fear I have, but that's not good either, obviously, that I've come to understand because he does give us instructions and obviously, I just wanted to read a quick scripture. Is the time first? Maybe not. We got, yeah, we got a, 10 minutes left. So go ahead and make it. Okay. A so the scripture is obviously um, the book of Mika. Mika 7, uh, verse 7 uh, says, As for me, I look to Yahuwah. I wait for the Alhim of my deliverance. My Alhim hears me. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I have fallen, I have risen. When I sit in darkness, Yahuwah is a light to me. I bear the displeasure of Yahuwah, for I have sinned against him until he pleads my case and shall execute right ruling for me. He brings me out into the light and I look on his righteousness. And you know, you see, that is so profound to even my situation. And, and this is, he's been giving me scripture after scripture, showing me to encourage me in, in what I should do, even in this courtroom on this day. You know, is it about Amy? Am I going to court because of Amy? Well, most definitely, most times in scripture, most people who were sent into persecution, it was actually not about the individual at all. You know, when we look at Sheol or we look at Mashiach, it was not about him. It was about you know, he, it was about his friends. Mashiach made it about us. He didn't make it about him. So, you know, I want myself and obviously all of us, I pray that we become to be, um, you know, that way where we even love so much from the heart, our enemies, you know, deep, deep, deep love for them. Um, as I said, you know, um, and I, I believe that's what this is for me. This is training for me, but it's also, you know, as a witness to them of him, you know, I want to attract them to our father, you know, through my, I mean, you know, Brother Rick, how much he's been coming at me and it's not been kindly or nice. It's been horrendous. And I've been so ill and I've had to, um, you know, it's just been horrendous. They've tried to, do, you know, drag me through the mill and make me out. I'm mentally deranged and a number of other things. <laughs> um, and I did feel like I was becoming mentally deranged. You know, all these words that go deep into a man's heart and they can affect the person if the person believes it. As Brother Yadiel was saying, you know, these things can happen and then it gets into your mind and you know the father has to do a good clean out and a good flush out when this kind of takes place but I believe he's training all of us but at least on this occasion for myself into when these words come I'm able to deflect them in a positive way use them for good refute it and kind of just say I'm a defender I'm not going to accuse you. You can, you can hit me, slap me, spit at me. I'm going to love you. I love you. I love you. You know, this is what is in my heart today. And it gives me joy when I feel that. Brother Yadiel said it so well, like, because he says, love casts out fear. And I was like, wow, yeah, because now I'm loving towards the enemies and the social services and the, the police and the, the judges and the, the, the prosecutor and they're all speaking these lies to me and because I'm defending myself without solicitors so they're coming out with all kind of garbage to make me stumble, so to speak. I was, you know, going on the offense, you know, on the offense. And so uh, now because I've got this love of for them, I have shalom. And this is what exactly Yadiel, Yadiel said. So. 
Sorry, I say Yadiel because of the I, I don't say the J. <laughs> hope you hope you don't mind, bro. <laughs> Elder. So yeah, um, yeah, thank you for the message. Perfect. Love you all. And also just a quick note um before I go, when I'm in when the people who have been helping me, one is a housing officer called Linda, and the um <laughs> the the justice system guy who's been helping me is called Richard. I just thought I'd throw that in there because my mum's called Linda. We have Amma Linda, we have your Amma Linda, your Richard, and it's just like, I was just like mind blown because I was like, we got all these names and he's just showing me that, you know, he's surrounding me with, with, this, with these comforts in this situation. So I love you all with all my heart and let's love, love our too. enemies. <laughs> Let the truth come out. Come on. That's all it is. Stand, stand in truth and let him set you free. Hallelujah. Come on, come yeah, come on. All right, Sister Robbie, you're back. Let's try one more time. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Is it working? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, I really appreciate what Sister Amy was talking about, this love and what was brought out about true love casts fear outside. When I was just thinking about the Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, where it says, and you shall love Yahuwah el with all of your heart and with all your soul and all your might. When I was thinking of this, it's this emotion. So people get fearful and scared. Their emotions come into play. And so now I realize that in my case, I've had problems over the years, and I'm still struggling with my emotions. There's times when I just feel really numb and hollow inside and disconnected from everything, you know, just from how I was raised. And there's other times where I just feel so joyful and excited. And so loving Father Yahuwah has helped me to experience that joy, but I still struggle with those dark emotions. So the more I realize that my relationship with him is spiritual and emotional, I see how it's going to help me to get my emotions in alignment where I won't be susceptible to excessive fear because people get very emotional when they're fearful or if your emotions are not regulated, they can have you experience a lot of anxiety and you're thinking of the worst case scenario, you're having panic attacks and you're breaking down emotionally. But if you're loving the father with all your heart, soul and mind, you'll be aware that you need to love him with your emotions and go to him and it'll help us, you know, with this because he's a god of emotion too but you know based on his word we learn how to have uh, spiritual discernment and knowledge to help us regulate our emotions so that we're not susceptible to excessive fear so that's what i appreciate about father yahuwah and praise yahuwah for all his goodness Hallelujah. thank you thank you sister sister danny I think you will have the final word today. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, you just muted yourself. Let me unmute you again. Try it again. There you go. <laughs> All right. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Um, thank you so much for this teaching. Um, as I asked you last week, I wanted to know what it means to fear Yahuwah. And now I know. And now I know, I feel amazing. Um, There's a scripture that says, uh, I will not leave you, nor forsake you. Well, when I see that, I think the opposite with, with the opposite about, I will leave you, I will forsake you. And that's my fear, that Yahuwah will leave me and forsake me. And that terrifies me, uh, simply because since he's been in my life, I have experienced an amazing shalom. Does that make sense? We were talking about it earlier on. And uh, without him, I have no purpose. I was the type of person, I don't know if, I'm, if it's okay to say or no. Please tell me if I'm, it's okay or no. Um, I was the type of person who was suicidal. I felt all the time, little things that were happening in my life and I wanted to give up. Um, and actually, um, two years ago, 
I was like, right, I had enough. I had enough and I cry out and I say, um, please God, obviously I didn't know his name. I said, please God, do something about it because if I commit suicide, I know I'm going to go to hell. No knowing scripture or anything. Um, and uh, on that day, I say, take this away from me. And he physically, physically give me a cuddle. This is uh, something I don't know how else to describe it. He physically give me a cuddle and took away whatever it was that was inside me and replaced it with his Ruach, Shalom. And from that day on, I mean, I'm terrified of making the wrong steps to walk in the wrong way for one day, for one second, because without him, for him to say, I believe you, I forsake you. <laughs> I know that he won't do that. But if he does it, oh my goodness, what's the point of living? What is the point? I have no purpose without him. So to fear Yahuwah, in my opinion, and, and the way I walk, my convention is to cover my head when I'm praying to him. That's reverence to him. Cover my head on Shabbat. I, I'm, I'm kind of starting to convince myself that perhaps I should do it all the time because I want to be in his presence all the time. That's, ladies, this is just my convention. Um, everybody's different. Everybody sees the scripture differently. Um, simply to no work on Shabbat, you know? I, I gave up, how much was it? Something like 300 pounds. I gave up a job that I would earn 300 pounds on one day because it was Shabbat. To me, that's fear, that's reverence, that's obedience. Um, I can go on and on, but uh, I, hope, <laughs> I hope it makes sense. And I hope that, um, um, I think I understand what the fear is. I am not as intelligent as I think I am. But um, yeah, thank you so much. Now I have a clearer understanding, obviously it's a process, but I have a clearer understanding. So um, all glory to Yahuwah for um, your teaching today. It was amazing. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. I think that's a perfect way to end. And uh, I'm humbled to have been part of this today. It's definitely uh, changed Within me, I see, I just, I, I felt something as we've been going through this that it's really kind of adjusted some things. So thank you for being obedient, for being here today, and may Yahuwah continue to barack you and keep you. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shalom, Akuti, and Rohim. Thank you so much for viewing this video. We hope it was helpful to your walk in the truth. Remember to always search the scriptures on your own, to study Abba's word and show yourself approved according to 2 Timothy 2.15. We invite you to study with us. To join us in a live study, just go to our website at assemblyofyahuwah.com and click the Join Us tab. We have something available Wednesday through Saturday of every week. If you've been Baruch or blessed by this video today or any other study, we encourage you to go to the giving tab on our website. Our elders all have their own ways of income, so none of the giving or proceeds go to them. Instead, it goes to biblical assembly needs. We also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss any new videos. We sincerely pray that Abba continues to direct your path as you acknowledge Him in all your ways. Much avaha and again shalom.